In the previous video, we found the area of some complex looking shapes like this one. But in this video, we're going to explore the length of some complex shapes. A round table has a radius of four. Six rectangular mats are placed on the table. Each mat has a width of one and length of X. They are positioned so that each mat has two corners on the edge of the table. In these two corners, side of X here, side of one here. We've got a circle of radius four on the outside for us to find X. Okay, so let's start off by drawing all important radii. You've probably heard me say this before if you've been watching the Mastering AMC 1012 series, but by drawing all important radii, you draw all radii that connect the center of the circle to a well-defined point. So in this case, the vertices of the rectangle. Four. Four. And I, okay, I, I'm going to skip them for now, but it's basically the same thing. And you, you can draw them for all the other ones, but it's basically the same thing. And we'll focus on our analysis on just one part of the diagram for now. Okay, so starting off, we have all our radii, or some of them drawn. We can draw the other ones later if we need to. Okay, so you have to find the value of x, and we know, let's say this is 1, x, this is 1. Okay. So the first thing to notice here is we have six rectangular mats. What does six really mean here? There's six-fold symmetry here. That's what it really means. And let's partition this diagram into six pieces. Let's partition the central part. What happens if, look at all these red lines I'm drawing. They partition the circle into six different regions. The total sum of all those angles, you know, I'm just gonna erase some of these for now just to make it more clear what I'm doing. The sum of these angles here, which are all the same by symmetry, is 360. So one of those angles must be 60. So 60 degrees. But then again, 4 and 4 are equal. So this is 60 degrees, and these two angles are equal. That means it's an equilateral triangle for the sum of the angles to be 180. And that makes x. Simply, that just means that means that x is simply going to be equal to this red length over here. Be careful not to confuse that with 4. The red length here, these two red lengths are equal by symmetry because it's an isosceles because of the symmetry. So that means it's an isosceles triangle. These two angles are equal and this is 60. So those two angles are 60 as well. So we can label x, x, x as well. Now we have to somehow use our radii condition. So first of all, we have this radii here, and it's a very good idea when you have isosceles triangles, drop an altitude. So many times in problems you have an isosceles triangle, you don't know what to do, just drop the altitude. Believe me, it's going to be a good strategy 90% of the time. So let's go by that logic here and see what happens when we drop an altitude. When we drop the altitude, the thing that makes it so powerful is now we can use Pythagorean theorem based on the height. Okay, so this thingy over here is x over 2. And this length over here is 1 plus whatever this part is. This part is just 1, because rectangle. And this part, well, it's an equilateral triangle. We know it's a well-known thing that the height of an equilateral triangle with side length x is root 3 over 2x. So we can say that this height, let's just draw that separately, this height is root 3 over 2x. So in total, this length is root 3 over 2x plus 1. So 
now we have a now we can just use Pythagorean theorem. Root three over two x plus one squared plus x over two squared is sixteen. And now this is just going to be some quadratic stuff. Let's do it below, or we can do it here. Okay. Let's just expand first of all. Three fourths x squared plus root 3x plus 1 plus x squared 1 fourth x squared and this total is 16 so x squared plus root 3x plus 1 is 16 quad minus 16 both sides and now quadratic formula and then the squared minus or plus 4 times 15 all over 2, and it's going to be plus because we want to have positive values of x in geometry. Plus, and then from here, we can just simplify. This is just going to be 3 root 7 minus root 3, all divided by 2, and that is our value of x. So this was not that tricky of a problem. The main idea was just realizing that this is 60 degrees by our symmetry, and then this is going to be x and x. And then now we just use Pythagorean theorem, x root 3 over 2, 1, x over 2, and 4. And then we got our answer of 3 root 7 minus root 3 by 2. Let's now take a look at a more tricky problem from the Amy. In triangle ABC, C has a measure of 90 degrees, and AB is a measure of 12 degrees. Squares ABXY, or yeah, ABXY and CBWZ are constructed on the outside. And the points X, Y, Z, and W lie on a circle. We're asked to find the perimeter of this triangle. Okay, first of all, this side length is 12. So let's just label everything 12, 12, 12, and of course 12 for AB because it's the square. And let's see. If this is X, just by square side length are going to be equal. So we're asked to find the perimeter of the triangle. In order to do this, all we really have to do is find x, because then once we find x, we can use Pythagorean to find ca, and that will give us all three sides. So now here's really the tricky part of this problem. The fact that x, y, z, and w all lie on a circle. That's really the tricky condition here. So like I mentioned in a previous problem, we want to draw all important radii. But the tricky part here is we don't really know where the center is. So let's try and let's try and see what we have from these points. Well, first of all, we know that there's a cyclic quad here. W, X, Y, Z is a cyclic quad. Okay, and so we know that this is a cyclic quad. And what does that really mean? That means that, let's call this angle A. And this is going to be 90 minus A. And then this, this whole angle here will be 180, will be 90 plus A, making this thing over here A. Interesting. Now let's say this thing over here is B. So now by our by our cyclicity condition, or by not by by complementary angles, this is 90 minus B. And then furthermore, by cyclic cyclicity, we have this over here is going to be B because this total must be 90 plus B. Now you notice something over here that seems pretty cool. A B. A B. 
similar triangles. They kind of just popped out out of nowhere. Isn't that kind of crazy? Really, the thing to notice here is cyclic quad. Because the cyclic quad, the four points, you know, generally it's, it's always a good idea to draw all important radii. But in this case, we can draw the radii, but we don't know where the center is. So this is kind of one of those rare exceptions. It, I'm sure there's possibly still a solution by drawing the center and doing all that stuff. But in this case, using the fact that it's a cyclic quad, four points on a circle, that, that's really the information it gives us here, that W, X, Y, Z is a cyclic quad. If they gave us three points and said, oh yeah, they all pass through a circle, that's the most useless information ever because any circle, because we can always draw a circle that passes through three points. But if you have four points and you draw a circle around them, not all four points can have a circle around them. So that means a quadrilateral must be cyclic. Okay, so now let's try to use our similarity condition here. So this over here, this is x, x, let's call this square root of 144 minus x squared by the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, re really we don't, there might be a simpler way to go about this, and that is that, let's just write our similarity condition first of all. So of course we have this triangle, similar to this triangle, and let's write it out. Triangle W, B, X, similar to triangle Y, a, Z. So we have WB, which is X over W or over BX, which is 12. And that's equal to YA, which is 12, over ZA. So by solving, we get that ZA equals 12 times 12 over X, which is 144 over X. And that makes CA. 144 over x minus x. And now we just use the Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus 144 over x minus x squared equals 12 squared. And this is just probably going to be a quadratic again. x squared plus x squared. And then that's the first term. And now we just expand the second one. This cool little thing that I always do, whenever you have something minus x squared, we can just do this because, you know, multiplying everything negative on the inside of something you're squaring is not going to affect your expansion at the end. So minus 2 times 144 over x times x plus 144 over x squared. And luckily for us, this stuff cancels. You have 144 on the other side. And we can add 2 times 144 to both sides. We get 2x squared plus 144 squared over x squared equal to 3 times 144. And now from here, let's just let, let, let's just let x squared to be our, a variable here. Let's, yeah, x squared is a variable, and let's just say y equals x squared. Because now that allows us to say 2y plus 144 squared over y equals 3 times 144. And now we can multiply by y to the whole equation, 2y squared minus 3 times 144y plus 144 squared. And this is a quadratic that we can factor, or maybe we can just use the quadratic formula. It might be a way to factor it, but let's just use quadratic formula. So we just plug it in here. And it's always, it's not, almost all the time we just take the plus one because we don't want negative answers. So that's going to be eight times 144 squared over four. And then this is just inside here, it's just 144 squared. That just becomes 4 times 144 over 4.
So actually, in this case, let's just keep plus or minus for now. So, so then our, our two possible values are, well, this whole thing over here is 144. So you can either have 4 times 144 over 4 or 2 times 144 over 4. So most of the time, it's going to be the plus thing, but sometimes the, if the plus thing is degenerate, then, you, then it could be the minus thing. But it's never, you're never going to have negative lengths. Okay, so what happens if it's this, which is just 144 and 72, really, right? These are our two possible values for y, for y. So that means x can either be 12 or 6. Now let's take a look at our picture. Is it logical for x to be 12? Sorry, no, x can be 12 or 6 root 2 because the square root of 72 is 6 root 2. Is it possible for x to be 12? No. I mean, the leg of a right triangle, that would make this thing 0. So, x is 6 root 2. And if x is 6 root 2, then this, this side length CA is also 6 root 2. So our answer is just 12 plus 12 root 2. This is a really cool problem. The key idea in this problem was really noticing the cyclic quad. And then when you have cyclic quad, we can do angle chasing. But angle chasing gives us miraculous similar triangles. And that's the, after the similar triangles, it was just a little bit of algebra. And this cool, cool algebra trick, which is whenever you have everything in terms of everything in terms of y x squared, we do this substitution. If you've seen the algebra videos, you know, definitely dealt with this before. And then it was just a quadratic in terms of y, and from there it was not very difficult. That's it for this video. In the next video, we'll talk about coordinate geometry. There's a lot of practice problems in the mastering. AMC 1012 book. You can check out the coordinate geometry video right over there.